Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering questions that you guys have asked me over social media. Now, if you see me looking down, it's because I am reading the questions off of my phone. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first question comes from Ryan. He says, what do you think about being a bassoonist in the South in your area? Do you think certain geographic areas are better than others for bassoon opportunities? Okay, first off, different locations are gonna offer different opportunities. So my reason for moving to Jacksonville, Alabama was in part because I teach at Jacksonville State University, but the other major portion of it was that I not only got to do the teaching, but there are three major cities, Atlanta, Birmingham, and Chattanooga, and all are equidistant from Jacksonville, Alabama. So that means that there are plenty of performance opportunities on the regular in the area. So when you're thinking about moving or setting up the next step of your career, think about the location and the opportunities that will be available as part of living in that area. Nicole asks, what is a piece that you never get tired of playing and why? Okay, my favorite piece that I play on the daily is going to be one aspect of JS Box Cello Suites. Now, this for me is not music that I started out loving. What? In fact, I didn't, I didn't like Bach at all in my undergrad. I kind of had this moment where I was like, oh, oh. I had that very typical why he wasn't popular in his era moment where I was like, it's too challenging, it's too laborious. And he plays out the same theme over and over and over. But now as I'm playing it, the ability to play the same theme multiple times in slightly different alterations is kind of like dessert. It's like, why would you have just one piece of cake? You would maybe start with the one piece of cake and then the next time you would have the dessert, you would have the piece of cake with ice cream because you know what kind of ice cream goes with it. And then the third time you thought, okay, it was really good with cake and ice cream. And then you think, I'm gonna do cake, ice cream, and caramel sauce. And so for me, now when I play Bach and it's that same idea over and over again, I am ornamenting it in a way like I'm having dessert over and over again. But like I said, it took me a long time to actually even like his music. Eduardo says, what's the most difficult excerpt for you and how can you enjoy playing it? Okay, all of the excerpts are challenging and that is why they are excerpts. For me, I have to make them mine. And the way that I make them mine is that I actually make up text to each of the pieces that I play. So if I'm really having a hard time owning it and putting a stamp on it where I can sing through the musical line, if I add my own words to it, and usually they are dirty or about food or just completely inappropriate, so I will not be sharing most of them here on my YouTube channel, but I sing. And as I sing those words, it helps me focus less on the challenges and it helps me sing through the musical line. And by doing that, I train the air. And once the air is trained, the tongue and the fingers are more likely to fall into place. Thomas, who Thomas asked like five questions that are all really good and could be separate videos. So I think I'm gonna save some of those. He does ask if I'm single, but he completely tells me he's not a creeper, uh, that I'm not his type because he's gay and married and happy. So rock star for you. I will just put out there because I like to know about the YouTubers I watch too. I kind of view them as my friends. I am not married. That's enough for this channel, right? Like you, you guys don't need more than that, right? Uh, Cass Lives asks, what bassoonists are you currently listening to and why? Okay. Well, I have to say that it's not one bassoonist, but it's actually a bassoon section, and it's the bassoon section of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And the reason that I am listening to them probably more than anybody else is because my brother plays with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. He's principal trombone, and I tune into their concerts sometimes um, to connect with my family, uh, to support him, and so as part of that, I just end up listening to the Boston Symphony Orchestra probably more than any other bassoons. That's just feeling the family love. Read Mama Smith, Read Mama Melissa Smith, whew, that's a lot, uh, says, what's your opinion on Vivaldi's bassoon concertos? Oh, okay, so we've come full circle because you asked what I like to play and as Bach, and who did Bach actually copy the music from? Vivaldi, so I feel like if you are 
playing the music of Vivaldi, you are setting yourself up that maybe in the future Bach will be more accessible to you. So I am all for the Vivaldi bassoon concertos. Of course, these were written for the young girls at the orphanage where he worked, and they were used as a teaching tool, and it was said that Vivaldi could write a concerto faster than a copyist could copy one, so he kind of gets a bad rap that so many of them maybe sound similar because he was he was just churning them out for the girls so quickly. But I have to say that I think that each one of them is slightly unique and has something that you can grasp onto that makes it um, linked directly to a lot of that Italian operatic style. And again, those singing through those musical lines. So I am, I am here for Vivaldi. Uh, I am so for it. And I also think that it will also set you up for harder music in the Baroque era should you go there. Brett Pierce asks, oh, hi, Brett, I know, hi. What is your why? Okay, that's the best part of the question. What is your why? Why do I do what I'm doing? And the reason I do what I'm doing is because I believe in young people. I believe that young people have so many places that they are told that they do not have a voice. I get to say to people that might not hear it anywhere else, you matter and your voice is important. And Coco's voice is important if you just heard that. The Sarcastic Strawberry, hey, I talk to you on the regular. Uh, what is the cheapest bassoon you would recommend, if any? Okay, I have my bassoon challenge and I have a video and a blog about this for used bassoons for $5,000 or less and also new bassoons for $5,000 or less. Quick overview because those are very extensive if you really wanna dig in about what I believe and why for cheap bassoons. Um, those instruments, what I would recommend is the Nobel Wood Composite, and I actually still have a discount code, although the discount code has changed. It's Aaron O if you go through the Nobel website, and by doing that, you can save, um, I want to say almost like $1,000 off the purchase price. So that is an option um, that is, I believe, the best brand new cheap bassoon on the market. Um, that's also part of why I'm looking to take old instruments and learn how to refurbish them is to make them available to you guys because I know the bassoons are so expensive and I want to make it available to everybody. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do. Okay, I think that is the bulk of the questions that I have been asked. I hope you guys are having a great day and that you are out there making music with your personal voice. I hope to see you guys next time on this channel. Be sure to click subscribe if you have not already and give this video a thumbs up if you liked this and I will see you guys next time. Bye.